Hi Lee, great session, uh, great meeting up with you, do some further work on your game, just a quick recap on the key points that we discussed, obviously moving forward, becoming a better player um, is as much about controlling yourself as it is your mechanics, um, sometimes to get the moves in there, you've got to slow things down a little bit, do things in a little bit more of a rhythmical manner, uh, you did a good example of that this week, Tiger's played some nice stuff on his return, uh, certainly in the first couple of rounds, looked like he was swinging in a really good tempo. Uh, the tempo and the rhythm of the swing does not eliminate any mechanical flaws, um, but it does allow you to, um, or gives you time to make up for them. Um, so anytime you're swinging with better rhythm, you're going to get better results. So you need to introduce an element of that. Uh, going at it 10-0 from the top is the easiest thing in the world. Um, however, when you're out there trying to control your wedge distances or trying to bring the flight of the golf ball down, a lot of the time you're not going at it flat out so we need to consider that when we're out playing and we need to train in a manner that encourages us to become better at that and attach more importance to that which i think based on you know what we did out on the course moving you know clubbing up a little bit with your shorter irons uh, and certainly the session that we just had will will move you towards you know you don't need convincing about that anymore let's say so we have a quick look there's two particular areas that I wanted to really sort of bottom out in this session and that was the move through the ball where the elbows divide and the overall look of the top of the backswing where there tends to be upon completion from P3 to P4 the club the butler club goes up rather than upwards and inwards so it's working upwards and inwards gradually throughout the backswing to p3 then it starts to work up more which is the lifting which produces that situation where the left arm works out the shaft of the club sits too high so the shaft of the club is hitting you above the right shoulder rather than midway through the right bicep which means throughout the downswing there has to be a shallowing out so that's the right heel kicking up right shoulder lowering, the handle raising and then it all gets a little bit messy through the golf ball. These are all habits that you sort of come in and out of. Um, when you last visited your leg action was a lot tidier, uh, the move through the ball was improving uh, and like I say you know we default back to the same sort of mistakes but you made some good progress certainly during this session. So the goal initially was to try and just max things out and try and do things uh, in a slower manner so we were trying to the key thought was during the backswing was to go back to p3.5 just to control the length of the backswing so you get the arms under control rather than getting into that position and then adding a little bit of lift now if you want to add some distance to the arc and you want to propel the butt of the club and the left arm further all you've got to do is keep working the left shoulder down keep extending the spine for longer to achieve that uh, you don't need to lift the arms you could lift the arms it's a mechanism of lengthening the golf swing without a doubt but you can see there already that in shortening the arm swing you're encouraging a slightly different body action um, and that's a positive move in your part so you can see there's less forward bend being maintained which is enabling you to stay more centered during the backswing rather than getting the upper center drifting off the golf ball a little bit. Put that line in a slightly more realistic position. Sorry about that, cheated there. You can see there's a little bit less movement off the golf ball. So in order for you to propel the butt of the club uh, and control the arms, you, you're eliminating the lifting of the arms, which is encouraging the extension of the spine. As you extend, stand up, you have to lower the left shoulder to offset it. So your ability to extend and left tilt has started to improve just by shortening the arm swing. So that's tidying your back swing up from face on. The key move face on was obviously related to the arms on the way through. And we talked about the elbows dividing a lot. The right heel would kick up and out. There would be a lot of division in the elbows and that lead wrist would start to sort of cup or extend, call it what you will. 
The key here is to make the swing feel like it's super slow motion. Now, you're super slow motion initially, um, and when left unattended, tends to be like most people's flat out swings. Um, so we need to curb the inner cave man, control him, um, and really try and control the pace at which we're moving. When we do that, we sequence the downswing in a better manner. The lower body is much quieter. As you can see there, the right heel angling inwards. The arms considerably straighter. We take the right, the shaft to parallel. See how much more straightening of the right arm and left arm we have. And we talked about the lead wrist and how that can give a little bit and how because of the strong grip it may appear different to some players. But you just want to keep adding more and more of what you see at that point. We also talked about releasing the head. If you keep the head down for too long, the body can't continue to rotate. And that's not just the hips, that's the chest as well. If the body can't continue to rotate, it'll tend to stop. The head will start working back and the club head gets thrown past your hands very quickly. So that'll emphasise the look that you're trying to get rid of through the ball. doesn't necessarily mean you've got it wrong. It just means that as the swing continues, it may look a little bit more released, shall we say, uh, than what it looks like at that point. So that was excellent progress there. As you can see the difference between the sort of before and after. And then this one I really like because we were doing this one at full speed. And we start to see the benefits of the changes that you've made. So again, the keys were P3.5 rather than just taking the club all the way back. So controlling the top of the backswing. So you can see there, there's far less lifting, which means as the hands go out a little bit in transition, which is fine. Instead of looking directly down the left arm, we're looking at a left arm that's angled inwards a little bit more which is beginning to shallow out the plane of the swing. So rather than being above the right shoulder, which will then require a tremendous amount of shallowing through the hit, you're now shallower in transition. So it's more of a gradual process through the hit. See at P6, the club's nicely on the inside. The right heel isn't, or the right heel, the right knee is not driving towards the ball anywhere near as fast. The right shoulder is not dropping as fast, so therefore the shoulders can turn through the golf ball on a more level angle. Well, not level, but less tilted. Um, we can see that by the fact that the right arm now is starting to expand a little bit. You want a little bit of flex in there, but not as much as you see here. And then as you come through the hit, again we can see a marked difference in the leg action. Remember this is at full speed. Uh, this is not, you know, you babying one down there. This is full speed. And the through swing, much, much tidier in regards to the legs and the arms. I just want more and more of that adding. Um, really looking forward to watching this one progress. So that was a real sort of turning point, as I said on Facebook yesterday. Uh, in regards to your development as a golfer. Uh, your ability to strike the ball is way, way better than single-figure golfer. Um, you can really get that handicap down, but it does involve learning the sort of finer arts and nuances of the game um, rather than just using your athletic ability, which is obviously there. Um, we need to sort of train you up as a golfer, teach you when to give it 10 nil and when to just back it off a little bit. I'm sure you'll enjoy that process. And like I said, I look forward to meeting up with you in 2017 and really getting stuck in and smashing things to pieces if you will um, but in a really sedate manner not a caveman like manner good luck with it have a great christmas and look forward to meeting up with you in 2017